Good morning. Uh, welcome to Community Resources for Veterans. Um, my name is Trisha. I work in the circulation department here at Downers Grove Public Library, but before that, I was actually uh, in the United States Air Force. I joined 1987. I know what you're thinking. No way, she's not that old. You're, I know, I know. But I joined in 1987. Um, I was in for nearly 10 years. I separated in 1996. I was uh, deployed during Desert Shield and Desert Storm. And initially, uh, when I separated, the only benefits I used from the, uh, the VA were mostly the medical benefits, which is a big one, because I know we all know that, you know, medical insurance, if you work somewhere and you're trying to get insurance, it, is, it will knock out more than half of your paycheck sometimes. So it was a real good thing for me that I could use the VA medical centers. Um, but this presentation, kind of goes a little bit deeper because I didn't know at the time everything that you can get or that is available to you as a veteran. And uh, there's a series of books called, from Liberty Snicket called A Series of Unfortunate Events. Well, I had that happen. I had a series of unfortunate events where I needed more than just medical help. And I found out just by going to my medical center, I go to the Heinz VA Center, that there were other benefits out there that were really, really helpful in keeping me and my family, and my family being my daughter, keeping us uh, in a house and keeping us from, you know, <laughs> being evicted. It was just, it was a lot of stuff going on. And I didn't know about all of these things. And I, I was just surprised and I thought, if I didn't know, there's probably a lot of other veterans that don't know that they can come to the VA and get help with a lot of things that happen to them in their lives. So that's what we're talking about today. And again, when I was doing research for this, it started to get really big. You know, there's a really large amount of benefits, but I'm just gonna cover four specific areas that, that impacted me. Uh, medical, um, housing, financial, and legal. So I'm just gonna give you sort of an overview of what is available, what I used, and then other things that are available. Again, it's a lot of information because there's benefits on the federal level, there's also state, and then there's local. And so I'm just gonna kinda go over that too so that you know, because sometimes it seems kinda big if you think you have to go way up. You can start right here in your neighborhood getting the ball rolling to get your benefits or find out if you're eligible. So we're gonna get started. Um, me personally, um, these are different ways that you can begin your journey with this. It's uh, va.gov, which is basically the federal website for getting benefits. There's also an Illinois website, and then there's the DuPage County Veterans Assistance um, Program. So I would suggest that if you're a veteran and you haven't already registered at a local VA hospital, that you do that first. And that is because now at the VA hospital, it's more like a, a community center. Once you get into that hospital, you're in the system as a veteran, and then they can look at your situation and they can start referring you out to other places. So I type two diabetic, I have high blood pressure. So I get, you know, I go to the VA, at one point I, got hives from something, and <laughs> so I was visiting an allergy clinic. So there are regular clinics, there are specialty clinics. I got my glasses from the VA. I mean, there's everything that you would think of at a, at a you know, community hospital is the same thing at the VA. But I would suggest starting with registering for care. So this is the va.gov website, and you can go to healthcare and then how to apply. And we're not going to go through the whole thing here, but it's good to know that you can apply in person at the VA hospital. If you're computer savvy, you can apply online. We have the forms over there. You can actually apply through the mail, or you can call someone up and ask them right here. You were asking about, did you need to hire someone to help you with this? No. Just about every page we go to on these sites, they're going to say, or you can call someone because they realize not everybody feels comfortable doing things online, but you can, there's usually also, this is the government, so there's a form <laughs> or two or three. So if you prefer to do it that way, you can always fill out a form and mail it in. But you see here, you can apply by phone, by mail with the form, 
apply in person, and right here, apply with a trained professional. And that's where you get help. So the VA will provide that help. So that would be my first step if I were you. One of the things that they ask for, and if you relate to the to military, you know you get your DD Form 214 when you separate from the military. So these are just some of the things that are offered. But Illinois, that's the Illinois site. So you can also go there. And let me find this one here. So if you wanted to start at the state level, again, benefits, programs, better you can do it through the state. You can just say, well, I don't really want to go all the way to the Heinz VA or I don't want to call a state department or federal department, you can go on the state veteran site. And then there's also the DuPage County Veterans Assistance Commission. So you can go here and you see there's some um, Veterans Assistance Commission and it tells you about the whole program, eligibility requirements, and you see that first one there is the DD Form 214. That just tells, that's basically your, your proof of being in the military, how long you were in, and that you had an honorable discharge, other than dishonorable, I'll put it that way. So when you start looking at the requirements, that's going to be one of the things. They're going to want to know that you had, what type of discharge you had, and, and the best way to prove that is with the DD Form 214. If you don't have it, again, I was in a long time ago, I, used, I had to send a uh, letter to someone, I call all around and trying to get, can I get a copy of my DD Form 214? Now you can just... There's a, we have a list over here, but there's a list of, um, you can go on the site where you can request your records, or you can fill out a form and mail it in and request a copy of your DD Form 214. So I always suggest that um, you keep several copies of that. I keep one in my wallet, one in the car, one at work, one at home, because every now and then people will ask you for it when you're trying to get it. So let's see. Oh. Emer emergency assistance, that's a, a part of the medical, but it could also be any type of emergency assistance that um, the military provides. And that's all on the VA.gov. I'm gonna keep going here, who was a veteran. I thought I put this slide in literally yesterday because there is some question about if you didn't serve in a combat situation that you might not be considered a veteran, but I think they have amended that to being that the time that you served. So you have to have served at least 24 months on active duty and have had an other than dishonorable discharge. So I will always check that first. If you, some people may not have made it, and, and basic training doesn't count. So if we have two months of basic training, you have to have served 24 months after that. And then you'd be eligible unless you had a dishonorable discharge. Now, no. But um, it's good to know what the definition of a veteran is because I think a lot of people feel if they didn't fight in a war or in a combat situation that they're not a veteran, and that's, that's not the case. And they've, they've added some other things to it. So even if you didn't do 24 months but you got hurt in basic training and you were, had to get out, then you could still be considered a veteran. So always just check your eligibility requirements however you apply for your benefits. Am I going too fast? Tell me, I'll slow down. Getting started, how to apply. Again, this can be done in person, through the mail, over the phone, or you can get someone at a center to help you. I, uh, I am registered at the Heinz VA. Previous to that, I lived in the city. It was the uh, Jesse Brown VA. Everywhere I've lived, the, one of the first things I do is I find the closest VA and I re-register myself there so that I'm a part of that community. So at the Heinz VA, um, I started going there for my medical issues, and then when the series of unfortunate events took place, um, I also reached out to them, and they started directing me to other places, the things that I needed, so we'll get started. So you can apply. This is saying what you would need before you apply, and um, one of them is to find out your eligibility right there. And then, how to apply by phone, you know, in person or online. And I think if you wanted to apply online, we have people here that can help you do that. I, I feel that that is faster if you want to do it that way. Um, over the phone and by mail, of course, is you know, snail mail. But uh, online is obviously the fastest way. And so we would have people here. We have. Um, social workers that are uh, assigned to our adult teen services upstairs. So if you want to get help that way, they're willing to help you do it online. Because I think that's the fastest way to do it. 
Um, I'm just going to go through these. The DD form, that's mine. Wow, it looks worn and torn, doesn't it? <laughs> I whip that thing out every place. <laughs> Everywhere I go, what? Veterans? Yes, I am, by the way. So that's the way your DD form 214 will look, probably in better condition than mine. But it's good to have that whenever you start to apply because someone they're going to definitely ask for it. And this is how you can request it. There's a National Archives. You can request it, again, online. But we also have forms over there that if you'd rather do it through the mail, you're in no hurry, you can mail the form in and ask for a copy of your DD Form 214. And that's the form. Where to apply. Again, they, I did not know this. There are so many in the suburbs here in this area, western suburbs, there are so many VA medical centers outpatient clinics, vet centers. I feel, I, I went to the Heinz VA, which is roughly 45 minutes from here. So, you know, you know it's a good drive, but uh, it was, I like talking to a person and being right there in, per, in front of a person and telling them what my needs were versus like doing it online and things like that. But there are some closer centers you can go to. I think there's a, one in Aurora, there's uh, Joliet, you know, maybe that might, or LaGrange. So you can just, uh, there's a link, I believe, to sites, the vet centers and medical centers where you could go in and apply and get help. So I think right here, oh, you can apply on the Illinois site or the DuPage County site. So you can do it lots of ways. Oh. And if you go and you see the link is starting out with va.gov which is where I said we should start from the beginning because you can really branch out a lot from there. You can just type in list of centers, you know, medical centers near me, and you can see all locations, and then you can find one that's closest to you if you want to go that route where you go in and get, get the help. There's a lot of them. That's the list. Okay, healthcare services. Let's dive into what um, I have personally used and then what else is available. So I've used the medical services. Um, I also used the mental health services. I uh, was feeling a little vulnerable and they were like, oh, we have therapy available. In fact, I still I go to therapy once a week and it is very helpful. Oh, physical therapy, yes. <laughs> yeah, the, the uh, age was creeping up on me, you know, my hip was <laughs> hurting, my shoulder was hurting. They were like, yeah, you just need to use it more. So <laughs> that was the problem. I was sitting too much was thinking that something was wrong with my hip, it was inactivity, but I was still able to go to the Heinz VA and I got um, physical therapy. Also, if there's something, if you're registered at that medical center, but there's something that don't offer, for instance, women, you know, you may want to get a mammogram or there may be something that's not offered, you, you will get referred to an outpatient. I went to the Loyola Medical Center. It didn't cost me anything. It was referred through the VA. It's under that. Dental services. So they used to offer dental services like just like the medical services across the board. Now they don't. Um, only if you're 100% disabled. However, you can get into something called the VADIP, which is the uh, Veterans Dental Insurance Program. So I'm with MetLife, but it's considered part of the VA dental plan. It's really good. Like, really good. <laughs> the the, the copay is less to nothing. They pay a lot of the expenses. Like, I don't come out of my pocket with hardly anything. So I'm getting everything done. So even if they don't offer it there, they will refer you, or there's other ways to get those benefits through sort of outpatient services. So those are the things that I've used. Um, preventive care services are available, inpatient hospital services. So if for some reason you had to have surgery, something like that, they would do that. Urgent and emergency care. Oh, I should put that on my side. I have had to go to the emergency room. I had hives, something I was allergic to, and my face swole up and it wasn't pretty. So I ended up going to the emergency room, and I really like this one, assisted living and home health care. I didn't know that that was offered until I started doing my research. So um, those are some services in the physical therapy and rehabilitation services. So if you get hurt or you got hurt on your job or something and you needed to have, like, rehabilitation or, like, uh, they listen on there, like, if you needed a prosthetic for something. I mean, all of these things that you could get at the VA Medical Center. Or they would, um, they have community um, outpatient services, and they will direct you out, and it still kind of falls under your VA benefits. And 
that's just the, oh that's this is oh so that's the MetLife that's my general insurance and then this is a list of all the appointments that's just one page of my appointments but I and it shows it that I go to my the allergy doctor there I go get my eyes done the physical therapy they list all my appointments and I get these emails so it just I didn't realize just how much you can you're taken care of through the VA and this was it was very very helpful for me it really honestly just saved my life so I hope this will be able to help someone else that's my medical center the highest VA and the vet centers to see register for care you can do that at the centers so even if it's your first day you're not even you don't belong to them that just go there and say I want to register community care Loyola I was just there a couple weeks ago Housing, yes, the series of unfortunate events. So I had a significant decrease in income in 2022 that was unexpected. I was in jeopardy of being homeless, about to be evicted. Me and my daughter, still in high school, it was not pretty. Um, that's what actually triggered the need to go to the therapy. <laughs> um, so, but I was at the VA for an appointment and they ask you questions about how you're feeling, how are things going, and I mention it, and I ended up spending the entire day there. Once you're done, I'm gonna call downstairs to our homelessness prevention program. Why don't you go downstairs and talk to Kate? I went down and talked to Kate. Kate said, oh, okay, so you need rent help right now, right now, but okay, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna direct you to someone in DuPage County that's gonna help you with your rent, People's Resource Center, right up the street. But, in addition to that, I'm going to start giving you some names and addresses of people that can help you get permanent housing because I was going to have to get out of the place I was in. So all of this is happening. So right now I'm getting financial assistance. She's working on my housing and she's working on my mental state of mind just from that one conversation. So thankfully, I am not homeless <laughs> and um, I'm getting help with my mental state. And they actually, uh, People's Resource Center, you just have to fill out some paperwork, and here they are here. I have used them more than once. So there's one right near Ty Warner Park in Westmont, but there's also one in Wheaton. They've helped me with paying my rent. They will pay your current month's rent, not including any utilities or anything like that. So just say you owe 1500 and 200 of that's like, you know, your utilities. They'll pay the 1300 and you just pay your utilities. There's nothing you have to pay back. Um, but while I was there, um, the gentleman that was there also said, oh, you need help with housing. I also have some uh, landlords who are personal, like they work with a, like a company. You know, these are landlords that will help, they work with us to help people who have trouble renting so we can help you get an apartment. So he gave me that list. So now I'm, before I had zero resources, zero help, and now I had to start <laughs> organizing it. I had two, like all the help I could think of, and it all started from being at the VA. So they also offer permanent housing um, as I was doing my research. So they have, um, there's the Veterans Homelessness Program, but there's the VA. I want to show this. This one is, you can get vouchers. They're called HUD. VASH vouchers, which is if you qualify, if your income is in such a place where you qualify, say if you were not trying to do the VA and you were a civilian and you would qualify for Section 8 housing, this is the VA equivalent to that, where they would find people who accepted these and they have a list of it and they would give you these vouchers, which is basically saying like your rent would be next to nothing because they're going to pay a good portion of it through these vouchers. There's also houses communities, there's Hope Manor, Hope Manor 1 and 2, that actually will house, some of them are like dormitories, they will house veterans who are experiencing homelessness, but there's also houses that are more like permanent housing that they try to find for you. So imagine how I felt thinking when I went into the VA that day that I'm getting this appointment, but really I'm about to get evicted. I won't have anywhere to live. And leaving there feeling like that's not gonna happen because the VA is not gonna let me be homeless. It was amazing, I'm telling you. So I hope this helps. Uh, so if you're already experiencing homelessness, someone asks, well, do you get to use the benefits even if you're already homeless? Yes, you do. They're gonna work on housing you and finding you housing while they're working on getting you the other benefits too. So there's a, a whole program, and I do have a flyer back here. It um, starts out with healthcare for homeless veterans, but 
they will work on all of your issues at one time because they're different departments. So you're, you're going to go in there and you're going to see a lot of people and you're going to have a lot of people emailing and calling you, but it's going to feel good because it's, you're going to know that someone's working on keeping you afloat. And that's the way I felt. Oh, financial assistance. And I put under here supportive services for veteran families because that's really the category that it falls on. And the VA themselves don't really give you money per se. They work with other organizations. So I got help from Catholic Charities, from the People's Resource Center. Um, oh, so at one point, ComEd, I was... Y'all, I'm telling you, I said series of unfortunate events. I owed close to $700 on my ComEd bill. And there was a program for veterans. And I went in and I applied for it and they paid all of it. It was called, it was the CHAMP <laughs> program. It's different now, it's called the La Heat program, but it's basically the same thing. You tell them, I, uh, my electricity is about to get cut off. It was, it was literally June, and I was thinking, oh my gosh, you know, you can't live without your air conditioner. But yeah, I went, they said, the VA, here, they gave me the, the link, and they gave me the paper form, I filled it out, I faxed it in, and I just kept checking my account, and one day it said balance zero. Just like that. So I got, yes, financial assistance, rent assistance, utility assistance. They also offer employment outreach, so if you, and I really, so how I ended up at the library was that I, my position at a major financial institution was uh, terminated and I was coming here for programs and, and I didn't know that I could have gone to employment, gotten employment assistance from the VA. Luckily, um, I was becoming a member of the library family and ended up, you know, finding out about a job and it all worked out. But I wish I had known that because I was unemployed for six months and that was a very stressful situation. I could have just gone to the VA and said, you know, can you help me find a job? They probably could have placed me somewhere. But I didn't even know that at the time. That was 2018. So, but now I know, hopefully it will never happen again. But if you do end up in a place like that, they will help you. They do a uh, placement. So they will help you find a job, make sure that you're placing a job. Great. And VA benefits assistance. So that includes, and that this comes later, but a lot of people, if you don't know, maybe you're eligible to file a claim, maybe you got hurt in the military and you don't you don't know how to do it or how to go about saying, well, I want to file a disability claim, something happened, they will help you. The VA will help you file a claim to the VA for that. So that was um, really great financial assistance. But that isn't even the entire list. When you go onto the different sites, like if you go to va.gov or if you're Illinois Veterans, there's a list. There'll be a list of all of the things that they will help you with. It's just so much. I really struggled putting this together because I wanted to add everything and we would have been here all day. <laughs> but it was it was just, I'm, I'm really proud of the fact that the VA does this for the veterans. And that's the form I filled out for the Veterans Assistance Commission the one in uh, DuPage to get help from them. So there were more than one occasion where I was struggling with the rent. So I got help a couple of times from People's Resource Center, from Catholic Charities helped me once, and the VA Assistance Commission, they helped me also. So at, uh, over the, you know, from 2018 to now, I've probably gotten rental assistance probably about five or six times where they paid my rent for me. I was struggling. Yay! Catholic Charities is one of them. And let me tell you, the when you're dealing with government organizations, and I know we're used to this thing where you go in and you're trying to apply for something, and they it's a room full of people, and they you're next, and they just disregard. I didn't get that at all with the VA. I'm telling you, my email inbox started to get flooded. Everyone that I reached out to for help followed up with me. The VA personnel, but also I remember Latoya, I remember her name from Catholic Charities because her, I just kept getting emails, Trisha, how's it going? Did you do this? Did you do that? Uh, Bill Profi also, <laughs> I remember their names because they were just, they reached out to me. They wanted to make sure I had everything I needed. I, I Again, very proud of the VA for that because you know, you hear the stories about um, people who served in the military just getting lost and ending up homeless and you know, having nothing. That, I tell you, if you get registered with them and you start applying for benefits, that will not happen. They will take care of you. Ah, 
there's the energy. That's the one for your utilities. Oh, so when I was in the city, I used, needed help with my rent then too. I'm getting better. Everything is really great. I know it sounds like, well, goodness. No, but that, that was another unfortunate event. This was 2015, but there's um, the VOAs, the Volunteers of America. But not only do they do that, they help me with my rent, but you see over here on the side, these are the different places, houses that are available where they will house veterans who are already experiencing homelessness. They have sort of like dormitories. They have some that are like big communities and then they have some that are just houses. They're like duplexes. They may have one family on one side and one on the other. I had no idea. And I was so scared. I was really scared about being evicted. That, that, that's gotta be the worst thing. And I was trying to like, keep it from my family and keep it from my daughter. So I was so stressed. And this just really, it almost immediately went away when I realized I had the support of the VA. Legal assistance. So even though I was struggling paying my rent, my landlord was not being very fair with me. And they were doing some things that were not quite right. For one, um, they didn't want to accept my rent from somewhere else from the people that were trying to help me. And Hope Fair Housing, another uh, local one, said, do you know that there's a law that says that not only can they not discriminate against you by you know, race and religion, they also can't discriminate against you for a source of income. So because they would not accept my rent, um, I got legal assistance from the Illinois um, Armed Forces Legal Network and they said, oh no, they can't do that. And they can't do that and they can't, I, I wanted to get out of that place anyway, but they had to basically say, okay, if you get out of the apartment by um, you know, May 31st, we'll just drop the whole, because I got served an eviction notice. They wanted to not go to court and everything, but I, got, I didn't have a lawyer, but the Illinois Armed Forces Legal Aid Network helped me, Paul, I remember his name. But so even if you, um, you don't know, Sometimes you don't know what you don't know. And some of these places, these uh, rental places, so what had happened was during COVID, a lot of the landlords missed a lot of rent because people were getting, like they were saying, you can't kick these people out. People aren't able to work. And so when COVID was over, they tried to recoup some of that. They were raising the rent at these astronomical prices. People, they were no longer letting you like be late on your rent. They wanted to kick you out. They wanted to kick you out so they could raise the rent on that unit and get more money for it. And that's what they were trying to do with me. So, um, but they couldn't, they didn't. Um, but also things that are offered, not just, I said housing discrimination because that's what it ended up being. And I sent this information to the people who were trying to sue me and stuff just, they just stopped, it disappeared. I was like, what happened to the, you changed your mind. Oh, okay. Yeah. So don't let anyone get over on you like that. They, they count on you not knowing, but if you're connected and I feel like the VA, I would have never known about them breaking the law with me if I hadn't, if the VA hadn't, if VA hadn't given me that information. But you can also get help with family law, like if it's divorce or, you know, um, custody, things like that. Um, VA benefits appeals for disability claims. So if you've already filed a claim and they say, oh, you're not disabled and you don't think that's right, the VA will help you file an appeal to try to get that changed. And also discharge upgrades. Like I said, to qualify, you know, the definition of a veteran is other than dishonorable discharge. If you think that that was not right or that was not fair, the VA will help you challenge that and hopefully get it changed to something that will make you um, eligible for benefits. So it's, it, I, I've gone through a lot um, <laughs> since I would say 2018. And, um, but the more I began to realize the benefits and the services that were offered at the VA, the less struggle I had. And everything hasn't gone away. I mean, there's some, still some things, but I'm telling you, I feel like I'm in a much better place because of the support of the VA. And, uh, oh, I did actually, um, so that was the Illinois Court-Based Rental Assistance Program. I, I logged in, I created my account, and my landlord was supposed to do the same thing in order for the, the, them to pay three months of the rent, which is all I owed them, and they didn't do it. They wouldn't register. They wanted to wait and then sue me later instead of just getting the money from there, they were basically just being, you know, not nice. So there we go. But they weren't able to do that. The VA said, mm, no, 
I'm not gonna let you do that. BA claims, service related. So I worked in a career field that was very loud, loud machinery, loud everything. I still have ringing in my ears now. Have had it all my life since I left the military. And Kate in the homelessness prevention program asked me about it. Now this isn't even her area, but she just asked me about my general health when I told her. I said, well, yeah, I sleep with, you know, these noise canceling headphones on or music playing all the time or else my, she goes, that's tonight. Did you file that on your claim? I was like, oh, I've never filed a claim. What? So that's another place. So she, <laughs> she referred me. She goes, I'm going to give you the name of the gentleman who helps people file claims. And that's what happened. I filed a claim and was able to uh, be qualified as a certain percentage dis disabled because of the things that happened to me in the military. And now I get a monthly um, disability check. So yeah, I did mine online, but again, there's forms over there. You can, all, I would, it, well, it started with someone in person. I went in person and um, he helped me fill out all this paperwork. You know, the, the government loves forms, but just take a day where you think you can just, you know, spend the whole day doing it. I got it done in a day. And once it was submitted, I just had to keep um, uploading like evidence and things like that, things I could remember. And I did all of that online. So and again, I think that if you need help doing that, we will have someone here to help you. But VA claims and you can increase compensation, PTSD, big one, um, an automobile allowance. So an automobile allowance is like if you got hurt in the military and you need some kind of a special equipment to drive, you can file a claim for that. Um, and the same thing with the adaptive equipment grant for you. Like so. Uh, you don't know though that that's even a possibility until someone tells you like who would have thought you can even at a clothing allowance like really so you know something happens and you needed that but there are so much so many services and benefits that the VA offers I hope that um, you will take that first step and which I think the most important one is just to um, apply for the benefits either with a paper form or you can call but or in person and get registered with the medical center so once you're there then from there you can start talking to people and tell them what you need and they'll start directing you either inside the hospital the clinic there or to a outside source and it's all there for you and I'm just rambling on and they will give you help with the claims I didn't put in here a lot about this, but there's something called VSOs, VS service officers, and I think I do have a, this, where they're sort of like, we were saying, do you want to get professional help with filling out these forms and stuff? You can actually get a VSO, a veteran service officer to help you with filling out forms and, you know, getting started with what you need. They are kind of like a, like an aid to doing that. and. and on this slide, there's like a way you can get a list of what those are. And Veterans Day discounts and freebies. <laughs> I just added this in because I love it when Veterans Day comes around. I always go to Olive Garden because you get the free meal. But <laughs> every year, um, one of my coworkers puts this list, this stack of papers on my desk. There's a huge list of all these discounts and benefits that veterans get on Veterans Day. And uh, last Veterans Day, my daughter and I, Started out that morning, McDonald's, a free meal, and then we went to um, Olive Garden for lunch, and I think we went to Dairy Queen and got dessert. So yeah, I just usually just take that day, and I thought, oh, Mission Barbecue. You get free stuff, I think Applebee's, but there's a lot, and there's other stuff too besides food, but you see where my mind is. It was all, it was all about what I could eat, but you get like discounts on services, and it's just on Veterans Day, maybe you get a free car wash or something like that, but I love for Veterans Day to come around, and I get that list, and I see, where am I going to go and get a freebie? But that is, I think that's my last one, that is the, the gist of my presentation. It's really um, developed out of my own experiences and Annie said you know there may be other people who were like you that didn't know that all of this assistance was out there especially for a veteran if you served or someone close to you have served and they served their country and now you know they get to enjoy hopefully some help from their country with the things that they need does anybody have any questions yes ma'am um my husband is a air force veteran me too um, 
and right now we're dealing with a dementia issue. Okay. Um, mm. As far as resources are concerned, he may be placed in a nursing home facility, yes. memory care, mm -hmm. whatever. Does the VA outsource any ways that the family can be reimbursed for monthly fees at memory care or in a nursing home? So I actually think the VA may actually have some, um, that's what, I think that would fall under the assisted living. So I would contact, is your husband right now, is he um, attached or connected to a VA medical center? No. So I would do that. I would reach out to the closest one to you because that was one of the services that I saw was available, assisted living. And I feel like that falls under it. So instead of having to be reimbursed, there may be one that the VA is already supporting that they can refer you to. So I would definitely check with your, like, get, I would definitely get him um, registered at, the, at a VA hospital because that's, that's definitely where I feel like the help for that will come from. And I feel like assisted living falls under, would fall under that, or his condition would fall under assisted living. It's just that these facilities are so expensive mm -hmm. where monthly costs are sky, skyrocketed. I was just wondering if there would be financial help for that kind of a situation. Oh, this is the living facility, Jerry Let's go to VA.gov. What is assisted living? I would, let me see, do they have someone to talk to? Uh, there's trained caregiver on duty. So it looks like they have and one. If your family's assets are so high, can you still get benefits? So, they do look at your income, but I don't think it would, um, so for me, at the time when I registered at the VA, uh, you know, I was doing fine. My income was okay. So, I, my visits, I, I, I pay a copay, so it's not completely free for me. So, that they will look at what your income is and say, okay, you can pay this amount or that amount. So, it may not be that you get 100% Free. Mine isn't free. I still have to pay for my um, my prescriptions are like seven bucks, and I do pay for my visits when I go. So I still get a bill from the VA for that. Um, when I was unemployed, though, that I adjusted it and I wasn't paying anything. But it just depended. It depended on how much you make will depend on how much um, your benefit will be. So I don't think it will negate you getting the help. It'll just determine the range of what you'll pay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so on the table over there are forms for things like um, applying for your VA benefits, uh, starting with ap applications for the VA medical center. There's also things over there, if you're already um, in the center and you just want to file a claim, there's claims forms over there. But behind me, I just have a few handouts of just some different programs that are offered at the VA um, and the Veterans Assistance Commission and the Illinois veterans benefits. So if you want to take some of the flyers, you can just take as many of these as you want. And they have the phone numbers and addresses on there so you can reach out to those different either VA.gov on the federal level or the Illinois um, Veterans Department or the DuPage County um, Assistance Commission. So you can start at whatever level you want. But I, again, I can't emphasize that. I really feel like my best help came from being um, registered at a VA medical center first Getting, getting my name in there, and then they directed me throughout that clinic to the help I needed, and then outside the clinic as well. But they were really helpful. I felt like I was just kind of spinning my wheels, trying to find every, like, you know, find help. And they even helped me with community help because they are they are connected with the community as well. Thank you all for coming.